Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are truly blessed to be in this great city on this amazing day. I have to remind ourselves this is February in San Francisco. What a hardship for all the visitors who are on their way to San Francisco to arrive at this amazingly great cruise ship terminal. So I want to thank all of you for coming today. It is my honor on behalf of the Port of San Francisco to get to be the one to say thank you. I would love to be able to call out each and every one of you because each and every one of you played a part in getting us here today. But as you look around, that would take hours and hours. So please forgive me for not mentioning you by name, but please give yourselves a round of applause and take great pride and credit in this new cruise ship terminal for San Francisco. And I want to say a special thank you to the press who have been here today and last week and the week before chronicling the metamorphosis of the waterfront and it has, as it has been unrolling before your eyes. And thanks to the tremendous coverage, it has gone worldwide that we have built a new terminal here in San Francisco. And I have been the beneficiary on behalf of the port of numerous uh, well wishes, statements of gratitude, and statements of surprise. And one of our long-term maritime partners of the port summed it up best when he said, with total sincerity, I never thought this day would arrive. <laughs> and I said, how could it not? The first recorded ship call in San Francisco was in 1812. That, of course, was a wind-powered vessel. It was a merchant vessel searching the world for posterity and new horizons. It took 100 years until there was a steam-powered vessel capable of carrying passengers around the world to come to San Francisco. The ship left Germany in 1908 for New York and arrived in San Francisco in 1912. That ship was the SS Cleveland, known as a majestic cruise liner carrying tourism around the world. In each city that was lucky enough to, rec to, to uh, uh, for receive her, each city that was lucky enough to receive that ship received great prosperity. And imagine what that must have been like in 1912 as our forefathers were rebuilding this great city following the quake and readying the city for the World's Fair. It was a momentous occasion. And so I couldn't be more proud on behalf of the port commissioners, the mayor, the board of supervisors, and all of you to be standing here 100 years later, making sure that we are moving forward with our great heritage and leaving that legacy for the generations to come. And so I would like to take a few minutes to recognize just a few of you in the crowd. First and foremost, the Honorable Mayor Ed Lee. Honorable President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu. Honorable Supervisor, Jane Kim. Honorable Charlotte Swig, Chief of Protocol. I counted at least 12 department heads from our sister agencies and commissioners of many of those agencies. Uh, and of course, the President of our Port Commission, uh, where, there she is, Doreen Wu Ho. Our Vice President Kimberly Brandon, Supervisor and now Commissioner Leslie Katz, the Honorable Mayor Willie Brown hiding in the back, and of course the amazing and brilliant Port staff. Thank you all for being here today. I just want to take a moment to bring us up to date on where we are in the world of cruising. As you may know, the cruise industry is growing exponentially. The cruise lines are building new ships, doubling their fleets. As most of you know who've seen the ships come in, those ships are carrying double or triple times the amount of passengers as before. But shockingly in the United States, cruise terminals are shrinking. And as this industry is expanding, cruise cities and cruise ports are trying to figure out how to address that demand. And in many cases, those ports 
are putting up tents to process passengers, as the Port of San Francisco sometimes does when we have too many ships, or they're rehabilitating, rehabilitating warehouse sheds, as the port does at Pier 35, but in almost no case except one or two are they doing what we have done here today and building a new terminal. This is a uniquely only in San Francisco experience because this terminal, unlike any other in the nation, is dual purposed. Everything about this terminal is meant to be used for cruise shipping and efficiency, but also for the region and for the visitors and the residents alike. Not just the terminal itself, but the park that will come in 2014, the immense valley here and the great tip at the end, and of course I must point out the expansive apron which will be available to the public every day except for when a ship is in. There are new terminals being built in Asia and those terminals are setting new records for passenger efficiency. This terminal will compete with that. This terminal is unlike any other in that it is an environmental steward representing San Francisco's well-heralded reputation for leaving the future off better than the past. And this terminal has a unique namesake. It is named after James R. Herman, former Port Commission President and President of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union. And it is a fitting name because Commissioner Herman was vociferous. He was adamant that the San Francisco would not leave behind its maritime roots. And he yelled and he screamed and he advocated. <laughs> and thanks to him, our city will always be a world-class waterfront city. And when you see his name on this building, I hope it will remind you not just of our maritime roots, but our maritime future. And again, please take credit and great pride for your part in contributing to this great day. And it is with great honor that on behalf of the Port Commissioners, I get to introduce the Honorable Mayor Ed Lee. Mayor Lee, as you well know, has been a champion of this project through his days as city administrator and even more so as mayor. He is a champion of economic diversity in this city, making sure there are jobs at all income levels and opportunities. And this project suits that bill perfectly. And so please join me in welcoming Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you, Monique. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, this is such a marvelous sight to enjoy, especially today with the weather that we have. It's already beginning, the summer of sailing, right, Stephen? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, this is really uh, what Monique has enthusiastically already exclaimed uh, and paying tribute to James Herman and all of his life's advocacy on behalf of the port, it's also a way to honor the port and its mission, its chartered mission was to revitalize this waterfront and bring people here in positive ways. Uh, this cruise ship terminal has been discussed for so long and I remember even the days I was working for Willie that uh, this was an inevitable dream that we had and now to be able to see uh, how this got done and to congratulate Turner Construction for working so well with the port and DPW and all the partnerships on time and within that $46 million budget. That's pretty good. Um, and they did it again in a very honorable way. They exceeded the local hiring goals to the tune of 26% uh, and 19% local business enterprises want to again thank the collaboration with DPW on this. Uh, their crews are, are just doing it and their collaboration with the port and with all of the others to put this terminal to make sure that it was done early enough. And of course, I don't think it would have been done without this push that all of us were uh, lucky to really be able to receive from America's Cup. And I want to just take the opportunity to thank uh, the organizing committee and 
at the event authority and working together with the city and the port and making sure that this got thrust out as one of those first projects to be visibly there to signal the legacies that will go well beyond the two hostings of America's Cup. See how I slipped that in there? <laughs> For years and years, this will be the legacy, uh, not only as a cruise ship terminal, but I see John Noguchi here from the Conventions Bureau. They love these opportunities where there's creations of more space for people to come and visit residents as well as outside visitors to showcase. On days like this, boy, you folks that live on Lombard and others who are here today, you can just look back and see how lucky we are as a city. And I feel very lucky to be the mayor of a great city that has so many of its parts working so fabulously together. Um, whether it's our planning commission, or Rodney's here today, or our port commission, or public works, or a fire chief and police chief, we're all working towards one goal, and that is to make sure our city is the city for the 100% for everybody's lives. And we do it locally, we do it the right way. And this is so exemplary of these kinds of projects that have gone all the way on every front to be so inclusive uh, for everybody. And uh, just uh, in a very short few, uh, few weeks, We'll see the sailing races that begin. I know America's Cup will be taking over this spot for uh, the months uh, for the races uh, beginning this weekend. But in a very short time after that, in March, we'll begin phase two of this project, which is the melding of public works, the port, and recreation and park. It feels here to make sure we have this view already, because you're standing and sitting on the two and a half acres of going to be some of the most beautiful open space you've ever seen in your lifetime. When we landscape this and welcome in thousands of more people that will appreciate this waterfront two and a half, two and a half acres of open space that complements this beautiful terminal. And so many thousands of people will disembark uh, here and go into the city, spend gobs of money, and then they will again write about how beautiful this city is. Uh, all of that done uh, with this opportunity that I believe the America's Cup has given us, and that is to fast forward these projects. And whether it's here, whether it's the space, whether now you see the construction along the Jefferson realm and how we're gonna uh, change that area and improve it, or along the smaller waterfront improvements that we're already signaling, these are great gifts, I think, that will last for many generations to come as a result of our city coming together. I look forward to all these projects, to this, not only this ribbon cutting, but continued collaboration with everyone in the city as to how we build on our success and keep the promise that San Francisco will present itself as its world-class status should for everybody who wants to come in this city, they get to enjoy the world-class city that is San Francisco. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. We are very pleased to have you on our team and uh, actually leading our team. We look forward to many more days like today. Of course, every day at Pier 27 will be as gorgeous as today. So thank you all for bringing that great spirit with you today. Before I introduce the next speaker, I would like to just mention uh, former port commissioners who are here. This project is such a long time coming. They have each and every one had a great role in it. So I'd like to recognize former port commissioner and fire commissioner, Michael Hardiman. Former Port Commissioner and Planning Commissioner Rodney Fong. Former Port Commissioner FX Crawley. Former Port Commissioner Ann Lazarus. Former Port Commissioner and BCDC Commissioner Ann Halstead. And former Port Commissioner Frankie Lee, thank you all for your leadership and continually pushing us to get here to today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the president of our Board of Supervisors, someone from the day he was elected who became intimately involved in this project, championing it 
for all of us, not just as a place where we all can work, but also as a place where we can be entertained and enjoy it. And it's so important for him that this terminal and this site fold into the fabric of the city. And so I'd like to say an extra special thank you to President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu. Good afternoon. With the exception of Supervisor Kim's district, I want to welcome you to the most beautiful district in San Francisco. And uh, I'm sorry that Supervisor Kim and I were late because we actually left a meeting that's still going on right now. But let me tell you why it was so important for us, for me, to come and be part of this. 21 years ago, I visited San Francisco for the very first time as a tourist. I stayed in one of the waterfront hotels. I walked along these piers, and I decided, like millions of San Franciscans over the decades, that I had to live in San Francisco someday. And it is so amazing to me to be able to wake up and represent the district that includes some of the most beautiful neighborhoods in the city that includes this waterfront. And as Monique alluded, when I ran for office in 2008, all of my constituents said, what are you going to do to work with other city staffers to make sure that our waterfront doesn't fall into the piers? And we have figured this out in recent years. With the Exploratorium opening up in a few months, with the Jefferson Street project moving forward, with the America's Cup moving forward, and with this incredible opening, we are rebuilding what 21st century waterfronts are all about. And I am so excited because I know that for the better part of this century in the 21st century, we are going to be seeing millions of folks come to this very point, the intersection of land and sea, the intersection of one of the most beautiful vistas in the world, where San Franciscans will be greeting folks from all over the world to say yet again, we are a beacon of inspiration. We are a model of what a city should be. When I think about all of us who are your elected officials, I think about the future and whether someday on this cruise ship terminal, there will be a young Ed Lee from a Seattle who's gonna come here. There's going to be a younger Willie Brown from a city port in Texas who comes here. There will be, well, someone who's the same age as Jane Kim coming from New York City who come here. Or a 21-year-old Chinese kid from the city of Boston who's going to come to this very spot and say, I'm going to make San Francisco my home because of the work that every single one of you did together. Thank you for being part of this vision. Thank you, President Chu. Really appreciated everything that you've done for us. And I have a long list of things I'm ready for you to do next. So glad to hear you are game. Mohammed Nuru had to stay at the meeting that uh, David Chu just mentioned, and so I know that he would have wanted to say how wonderfully great the Department of Public Works has been as the project manager on behalf of the city of this project. They, hecken, they, they responded to the port's call for help. They have been the most flexible allies that have, could, have, could have come along as we've changed the vision of this pier and this project numerous times to accommodate newer and greater ideas. And they have been just terrific to work for. They have only complained a little about the port's meager budget, uh, but they've worked miracles within that space. They've had great partners in the venerable architectural engineering design team of KMD, Falong, Barmelo, Ajamil, and so many others. And I know that Mohammed would really want to thank all of the workers who are here on site, but most especially the members of the Department of Public Works and the port staff who have made this all possible. And so in Mohammed's absence, thank you all. <laughs> Next, it is my honor to introduce Cavender Singh. Cavender is the general manager of Turner Construction. Turner is leading a group of 33 firms working on this amazing American-made project. And so as you look around, you will notice that there is great structural steel 
American made. There is great glass American made. As the mayor mentioned, there is tremendous local hire participation, regional participation. This is built by those of us who will use it and love it forever. And we commend all of you for doing that. So please help me welcome Cavender Singh. Well, first, let me thank um, the executive director to include me as the representative of the design and construction team on the stage today. Um, and secondly, let me also take the opportunity to thank the mayor and his administration and the leadership in the city of San Francisco, because these are exciting times for the design and construction industry. As you can witness as you drive around the city and see the number of tower cranes, and this project is just uh, but one example. It was not too long ago, if you remember, uh, July the 17th to be exact, when we held a similar ceremony for the topping out uh, of the steel, the last steel beam. And it is only about seven and a half months later, she is all dressed up, ready for the prom. So, uh, at a remarkable speed. This project, I believe, has um, achieved new levels of collaboration for a public project. We started construction in about May 1st, and 10 months later, the project is all done. And this could not have been done for the extraordinary collaboration between the port, the city of San Francisco, represented by the DPW, and the management team that you see behind me. And I think this, this project can actually become a good case study of how to deliver projects fast when you need to and do them economically. The mayor already spoke about the numbers in terms of we are almost 20% small and micro businesses participating in the first phase, over 25% of uh, San Francisco residents working on the job, and about 1,000 uh, folks who came and worked on the field itself because we keep good record because every single person who comes to the job goes through orientation uh, on, on, a, on a job site. So over 1,000 jobs only for phase one. Based on those numbers, when we start phase two in about November, I would imagine we would have at least six to 700 um, on-site uh, uh, jobs that will be created. So let me thank all the subcontractors, the unions, the design team, and, and of course, the executive leadership for the success of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Cavender. Ladies and gentlemen, please, can I have a round of applause for all of the workers who have delivered this in crazy hours, crazy days, working at night. Do you know how cold it is out here at night? I'm impressed. Those fingers work really hard. Next, it is my honor to introduce the president of the Port Commission, Doreen Wu Ho, someone who has been with us for two years, I think now, and has charged us into new territories under her guidance. We have just been expanding like crazy and doing amazing things and attracting all of your support. So please welcome Port Commission President Doreen Wu Ho. Good afternoon. Thank you. I've been very blessed, I think, of all the fellow commissioners here to be up here on the podium today, but I'm certainly not here alone. And I remember when um, Mayor Ed Lee asked me about the Port Commission, and uh, we talked a lot about the challenges and all the issues. And I guess I never knew how much reward there was going to be in terms of being on the Port Commission. And certainly today is one of those days of celebration when you begin to see, as Cavender said, you know, within a short 10 months, you actually begin to see the realization of dreams and visions and all the things that uh, want, make the waterfront so exciting. Um, I think I've joined in a great period where we're activating the waterfront up and down from, as you heard from previous speakers, from Jefferson Street to the cruise ship terminal to the Exploratorium to where we see, and I see Jack Bear here from the Giants, where we're be working on uh, Seawall Lot 337, Pier 70, Orton Development uh, down on the Pier 70. It just is endless, and I can tell you we have long commission meetings, but we all love the work that we're doing. And I think we want to thank so many people because certainly without the dedication and perseverance of everybody, we could not make this happen. And you've heard about the enormous cooperation and collaboration. But again, we'd like to sort of recognize on behalf of the commission, the mayor, um, the, board, the Board of Supervisors and David Chu. Uh, Monique has done an excellent job in trying to make sure we actually get all the execution done. 
And I want to acknowledge that obviously, you all know this didn't start yesterday. Um, there was a Blue Ribbon Terminal Advisory Panel led by former Port Commissioner Frankie Lee, who's sitting here, uh, that recommended a public financed uh, terminal project. And we know that there were several attempts, I guess this is the fourth attempt I understand, before this actually happened. We also have a lot of our communities involved, the, the Ports Northeast Wharf Advisory Group and the Maritime Commerce Advisory Community has provided a lot of input along the way. And I want to also just uh, say in terms of the other uh, present commissioners, Commissioner Brandon, Commissioner Katz, unfortunately Commissioner Willie Adams could not be here today, he's traveling, but as you heard earlier, um, I did have the honor to serve also with Ann Lazarus, FX Crowley, and uh, have gotten to know Ann Halstead, Rodney Fong, Frankie Lee, and um, Michael Hardiman. So thank you all very much for your cooperation. Um, I have a particular personal affiliation with what we're doing here today because I am a cruiser. I've been on probably seven or eight cruises around the world. I've been on some fantastic ships. And unfortunately, when the uh, Queen, I think it was the Queen Mary, stopped in San Francisco, I had the experience of going through Pier 35. I was a little bit horrified by the experience. So I can't tell you <laughs> how excited it is to be able to see that actually we are going to have a world-class destination with a world-class experience. Can you imagine 200,000 people who come to San Francisco on cruise ships coming off into a not very good experience today, and this terminal is going to wow them, and it's going to be the start. As you know, on any journey when you go on a trip or vacation, your first impression is so important, and to be able to walk into this terminal and have that first-class, world-class experience, I think, is just is priceless, and I think that um, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been through the terminal and have conversations with the staff about, you know, where they're placing things and things like that, because it's really, really important, but I think it's, um, you have to know that in addition to 200,000 passengers a year, and we we hope that keeps increasing, as Monique told you earlier. Uh, we think that the terminal we only used about 25% of the time is what I calculate. So 75% of the time it's going to be enjoyed with the 60,000 square feet um, with other events and uh, it's going to be very exciting. This also creates, and Charlotte is waving her hand because I, I think the Office of Protocol has all sorts of ideas. Uh, I think that um, this is also that the, the cruising industry uh, provides about $30 million into, puts over $30 million into the local economy. 300 jobs, so we couldn't be more excited about the benefit that it provides. And I think the first thing that we're very excited to be able to go off with a big bang is to uh, actually welcome the America's Cup to the cruise ship terminal as the first user. Uh, and I think that couldn't be more than more firecrackers than we could have ever thought of um, to have the America's Cup come and to be the first user and to get everybody with what all the plans that they have, which I'm going to allow Stephen Barkley now um, to explain to you what's going to happen with this terminal here for the America's Cup. Stephen? Uh, thank you, Doreen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Monique. And thank you, David. And thank you, everyone else that have really helped us uh, to get to this point. Uh, firstly, congratulations to the city and to the port on this milestone. The James Herman uh, cruise ship terminal really looks fantastic. Uh, I think the first thing I have to do is, is, is thank Monique again. Uh, Monique said to me that the cruise ship terminal would be ready uh, for us to take it over on the 1st of March. <laughs> I have to apologise, I was a little sceptical. Um, I might have said that once or twice and so it really is a, a fantastic uh, effort by the port, the staff and everyone else to get us to this point. So again, Monique, thank you. We're really proud to be the first tenant uh, of this facility. Um, over the next 10, 12 weeks or so, we're going to get it ready for the international media to come here, uh, for hundreds of guests to be uh, entertained inside for uh, the public to be uh, involved in the entertainment areas and uh, in, into a, a sports bar type of a complex. Um, if you look behind me and look up there, all of the people that come here, the international media, etc., as I said, are going to get that view uh, as they come here to the America's Cup Park to experience the America's Cup in San Francisco. It's absolutely fantastic. As I said, the, uh, for us this is the start. We've got about 10 or 12 weeks to get this facility ready and, uh, and that's what we're doing to get ourselves um, to the start of the summer of sailing here in the San Francisco. 
that, sa that sailing period starts around about the 4th of July and then we'll go through all the way till about the 20th of September. We're going to experience over 50 days of racing up and down, up and down the bay. So really all I want to say in conclusion is we're really very proud to be here alongside the city and the port. We're thrilled that the America's Cup has been a catalyst to help get this facility here for San Franciscans. So thank you very much. So thank you all, Turner and everyone, for making me look good with Stephen Barkley and committing to my promise to be here on time. I mentioned at the outset that this was an only in San Francisco moment. And the one thing I haven't mentioned yet is this is the only facility that is going to take steam, diesel powered engines and wind powered boats at the same apron, the same terminal for vastly different uses. And we couldn't be more proud of that opportunity. And again, we thank you, Stephen Barkley, and everyone with the America's Cup Event Authority for that opportunity to showcase how ports can be modernized to service both the present and the past and the future. And I'd also like to recognize some members from the America's Cup Organizing Committee who are here today, Mark Buell, Lucy Jewett, and Kerry McClellan, and thank them for all that they have done to make this a marquee day for our city. And so now we are going to cut the ribbon over here, and then I invite all of you to be among the first to come upstairs and see for yourselves this perfect picture frame of the iconic and exciting San Francisco from the spires of the Bay Bridge and the Ferry Building to the Transamerica Tower Coit Tower and the beautiful housing nestled into Telegraph Hill. It is a once and only in the world, and thank you for being part of it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 